the night sports overtime also sponsored by the letter g railing at gaylord is our ot on the road feature last call for varsity football in marion and let's hope our fans choice game of the week is a lot closer than the vote was buckle in this is the original big show Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Week 2 of Sports Overtime. Almost everybody's gotten that first one out of the way, including us. Week 1 was good, but Week 2 will be even better. We have outdone ourselves 16 games this week, even more quality. Let's start with our overtime on the road matchup. It was all about the slab tonight in Gaylord as the Blue Devils and Vikings meet for the first time since 1996. First quarter, Cotton Neff getting Gaylord on the board, plunging through the Grayling defense for the TD7 Zilch Blue Devils. Second quarter... They just continue to dominate. Shane Foster carrying the ball past the Grayling D down to the end zone. Two touchdown advantage for Gaylord going into the half, and they just kept going. They're leading by 27 before the QB taking the matters into his own hands. Crisscrossing his way down the field before leaping into the end zone. 35 0 Blue Devils. Thanks to that Fitzick TD meeting the slab will remain in Gaylord for another year. 9 and 10 is Shannon McGratton shot the highlights for us tonight. She's live in Gaylord with reaction from this one. Jeff, when the Blue Devils and Vikings took the field tonight, you could feel the energy in the air. However, after two fumbles early by both teams, the crowd started to quiet down until Gaylord was able to cross the plane for one of its seven touchdowns, allowing the home team to win its second consecutive shutout this season after only winning one game between 2012 and 2013. It's all of our first victories on a home on a home turf. So to have it be against Grayling, which lives right down the road, feels great. And to only win one game in two years, and finally our senior year come out and win two games in a row, feels great. Especially two shutouts. It's so good to to be on the winning track and be back in that mode. And our kids are playing and and feeling good about themselves. And every week it seems like we just get a little more confident, a little more swagger, if you will, defensively especially. And and our kids are, are, you know, they're they're focused. Gaylord's all-time record against Grayling is now 36 and nine, and that slab we showed you earlier, it's staying right here in blue and gold territory, where it has been for the last 19 years. Up next for Gaylord is Standish Sterling on the road, while Grayling is going to regroup for Glen Lake in Week Three action. That'll do it for your Week Two game of the week. Reporting live in Gaylord, I'm Shannon McGratton for Sports Overtime. Thank you, Shannon. Marion hosting its last varsity game of the season after TC Christian tonight. The Eagles will become a JV team. They're actually paying homage to their four seniors before the game and early in the first. Eagles senior Avery Keatsman busting up the gut and races 24 yards to the house. Marion grabs a quick 7-0 lead. Next Eagle possession ending in a punt, but the Sabres have other ideas, busting in and blocking the kick, setting them up in scoring territory. But early in the second quarter, fourth down, Marion's Riley Filo coming up with a sack to force the turnover, and Marion marches it right down the field, capping it off with Spencer Whitbeck, the bootleg TD. Marion finishing strong for their seniors, 47 to zip. Keeping Eric Lloyd with the Varsity Boys on the big show, he's got the matchup of perennial powers. Hey, Jeff, usually there's a quite a noticeable difference between a Division 5 team and a Division 8 team, but Beale City has had no problem jumping up to find tougher foes. And as for Claire, they are playing down, but picking one of the toughest of the bunch, the second straight week against a state finalist from last year. The Aggies start the second half down 6-14, to looking to force their way back. Alex Schaefer up the gut, trucking Pioneers for the first down. Later, Aggies on the edge on fourth down. Tucker Gross rolling out, looking for it all. But he finds Joe Houston of Claire with the fantastic one-handed pick. Incredible play, but probably should have just knocked it down because on the next play, Beale City brings the house and they leave it with two points. That's a safety, and that will come back to haunt Claire because on the first play of the fourth quarter, it's Schaefer again, up the gut. Schaefer again, dragging Pioneers. He scores. Aggies go up by one and hold on to that score, 15-14. to 14. Next up, the Spartans versus the Wolverines as in Pinconning and Vestiburg. The Spartans coming off their first win since 2010, looking to turn the program around against a relatively young Wolverine squad. Early on, scoring was hard to come by. Sport, Spartans, Mike Wilson's chucking it up, but it's Zach Booth, or for Zach Booth, but it's Wolverine's Jared Hilden with the pick. Vestiburg riding on that momentum on the ensuing drive. Jason Mertens off the right side for a tough first down, but a few plays later, Spartans force a fourth down and short. Then it's Booth. Once again, he's going to force a turnover on downs with his beautiful trail tackle. That's going to be Spartan's ball. 
Then the next drive, it's going to be Booth. He's on the sweep, and that's going to be 75 yards to the house. Trust me, it's a long play. But apparently the Wolverines are camera shy because once we left, they came out to play, ultimately winning 38-7. to Elsewhere in the Mid-State Conference, Mount Pleasant Sacred Heart was blanked by Grand Rapids North Point Christian, 34 to nothing, and but Montebella took care of Onekama, 30 to 22. For Sports Overtime, I'm Eric Lloyd. Thanks, Eric. We have highlights from our Fans' Choice Game of the Week, probably one of the biggest landslide votes ever. That's coming up. Well, that's one down. We've got three left. Double overtime is next. Woo!